Maybe you have an ongoing joint pain. Maybe you just feel swollen, like your hands are inflamed or certain parts of your body is inflamed. My name is Dr. Taranella. And in this video, we're going to look at what causes inflammation in the body. We're going to break down the various types of inflammation, systemic, chronic, acute, and look at what's going on with the immune system in these cases. So if you like this kind of information on health, nutrition, hormones, digestion, et cetera, just trying to expand your health awareness and understand what's going on in your body, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at what causes inflammation in the body. The first thing to think about with this question, what causes inflammation in the body, are the types of inflammation. All inflammation is the same, and that is an increased activity of your immune system. But the immune system is very complex. It has different layers, different facets to it. So we have to understand that when we say increased immune activity, it can mean a lot of different things. So looking at what causes inflammation in the body will help us understand this complexity a bit more. So there's acute inflammation and there's chronic inflammation, you know, which can be defined generally as chronic inflammation being anything more than two months of ongoing inflammation. There's also local inflammation versus systemic inflammation, where local inflammation is basically, you know, I cut my finger, I broke my bone, I have arthritis in my knee, something like that. Infection in the skin or even a bug bite. All these things are examples of a localized inflammatory process, whereas systemic inflammation is going on all over the body. This is usually caused by more obvious things like autoimmunity, like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, all those autoimmune conditions are representations of systemic inflammation. But even something like a cold or flu is also happening all over in your body. Your immune system is responding from all areas of your body, but specifically it's going to be localized to the tissues in question. But with like a cold or flu, you, your whole body feels sick, you feel tired, you feel run down. And that's an example of a systemic type of inflammatory process. Allergies too can be systemic inflammation because there is an increased immune activity there. But typically, again, the allergies are going to be in the head and neck area because that's where the allergens are coming in. But sometimes people will feel run down and tired. So there's this idea of the immune system globally in our bodies affecting everything in our bodies. Generally speaking, the cause of local inflammation or acute inflammation are going to be known, they're usually quite obvious. It's going to be specific sites of pain where there's tissue damage or an acute illness, like an upper respiratory tract infection. Once those acute symptoms last more than two months, though, we start to think that you may be having some kind of chronic thing going on that's not going to resolve. Maybe it's just a tissue injury that's not healing, or it could also be you know, starting to spread to other areas where it was just one joint, now it's two joints, three joints, four joints. Then we start to think it's more systemic. Chronic local inflammatory processes are going to be things like osteoarthritis, also known as degenerative arthritis, degenerative joint disease. And that's pretty straightforward as far as understanding what's going on with that. However, the cause of chronic systemic inflammation is harder to pinpoint oftentimes, unless, of course, it's it's like obvious things like autoimmune disease. We know that short bursts of inflammation are needed for the body to respond to tissue damage, infection, even exercise to some degree is going to have a little bit of an inflammatory process that happens. However, there are social, environmental, and other lifestyle factors that can chronically increase immune activity. These factors can chronically promote this systemic inflammatory process and encourage things like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, chronic kidney disease, fatty liver, cancer, autoimmunity, and neurodegenerative diseases. We know some of those problems, some of those health problems can in and of themselves create inflammation. So in some ways, it's sort of like a chicken and egg thing. There are also th specific things like chronic infections that maybe you don't know about, physical inactivity, visceral obesity, so fat like in the organ areas uh, that that's called the visceral fat, increased accumulation of that, intestinal dysbiosis, so maybe 
potentially pathogenic microbes in your digestive tract or just an overall imbalance, certain dietary factors, social isolation, psychological stressors, disturbed sleep patterns, exposure to xenobiotics, which are basically like toxins from the environment, air pollutants, industrial chemicals, and even tobacco smoke. All these things are going to contribute to this chronic systemic inflammatory process. Of course, the natural inclination to someone that's you know curious about their health and wanting to optimize their health is how do I limit this inflammation? How do I reduce my chances of having inflammation in the body? And of course, some of these things are quite evident how you would do that. I mean, you would avoid smoking, for instance, but others like intestinal dysbiosis aren't as straightforward or self-evident. I think before we even jump into how to limit these things, you really want to know whether or not there's a actually inflammation occurring in your body? Is there some way that we can objectively measure it so that whatever intervention you choose to do, you'll be able to see that that's actually coming down? Or does it actually look okay? And maybe you just feel inflamed, which can also be an indicator that you have inflammation, but doesn't always show up on the test. In other words, we don't want to overcorrect for something that's already working the way it's supposed to. So then the question is, how do you tell if you actually have inflammation? That'll be the topic of the next video in this inflammation series. Okay, that should give you a better understanding of what causes inflammation in the body. Hopefully that gives you a more nuanced way to look at inflammation. There are much deeper layers on the immune system and inflammation in general, which we're going to get into as this series progresses. If you do have questions about anything in this topic, drop it in the comment section. We may do a separate video on that. Definitely try and answer your question. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you next time.